So in the last video we had a look at how you could make a really good table which will enable you to get full marks in your um, practical coursework for the data table and the displaying of data parts. So if you remember uh, we've got the correct number of significant figures, we've got our tolerances um, and we've worked with our data in order to work out averages and uncertainties. Our job now is to uh, create a decent graph from Excel which again will fulfil all of the criteria. So a little quick recap. Uh, so let's just draw a box there. Um, if you remember, I was looking at um, the simple pendulum. So pendulum follows the equation t equals 2 pi root L over g. So the time period is related to the length of the string. Uh, it's an awkward equation, so I'm going to make it a bit easier by using uh, t squared equals 4 pi squared over g times by L. What I've got in that case, if I just cover up this top bit, uh, is nice, simple... Um, equation where I can plot y axis as t squared, I can plot uh, length on my x axis, and the gradient or graph is uh, a value of 4 pi squared over g. So, question is, how do you go about um, plotting the graph? Best graphs to plot in Excel are scatter graphs. So, you create a scatter graph by going to um, insert with the tab at the top left hand side uh, you want to insert a graph and in particular a scatter graph so you choose that drop down option and then you don't want any lines obfuscating any of the patterns so just the, that button there so you click uh, that button and we should create ourselves a nice graph so we've pressed that button and we get ourselves um, a fairly empty graph we need to now fill that with data in order to do that what you need to do is right click on that empty space you right click on the empty, days, the empty space and from the drop down menu you select data, so uh, buttons there, fairly simple. Your select data then, you've an empty chart at the minute, you need to add some data, so you need to think about what's going to be plotted on your y-axis, what's going to be plotted on your x. Once you've done that, all you need to do then is press the add button on the um, box which is given. This will then have a series selection um, box come up and you need to select your x and y values. You do this by pressing on um, this bit here and then going to the correct set of data in your table. So once I've pressed that, I then just need to highlight the correct data. So in my x-axis I wanted length, if you remember the equation. So I highlight that row there and axis I wanted the time period squared, so that's on my y-axis, so I've highlighted that information from my table. When I do that, the data pops up nicely for me in the box. I've also put in um, a title, because my graph's going to want a title in order to get full marks. Once I've done that, I just need to press OK, and then I can start to edit the look of my chart once I've got rid of this box and I can have a better look at it. So to edit the look of the chart, you need to just uh, right, uh, left click your mouse button somewhere in the region of the box, so it's over there somewhere. Uh, this option will come up in the top right, Chart Tools, and you just then select from there. From this point, there's three things that we want to do. We want to get ourselves a decent chart title, so you select that drop-down box. This becomes highlighted, and then you can just type in the title that you want, ideally something which tells us what our graph is showing. Secondly, we want to add axes titles, so this drop-down option, uh, and we'll get X and Y axes titles. Uh, and you need to put in the titles, so the variable that uh, the values are for, uh, along with the units ideally the symbol and we're also going to want some grid lines so we can actually take some proper measurements from our graph so grid lines you're going to want to select both major and ma uh, minor and major grid lines for both axes for x and y once we've done that we can see that our graph now has a decent title it's got uh, the axes labeled with decent units and we've got our grid lines on there our next job is to add a trend line to our data and give it an equation so that we can actually start to pull out some values from the information that we've recorded. So, to add a trend line, we go to the layout in our chart tools option, we go to trend line, and we don't want necessarily any of these, uh, we want more trend line options. It gives us more um, control over how the trend line is set. Once we've done that, we can select a number of things. Um, ideally, your graph is going to be a straight line graph. That's where we can put out the most information. So you want to select linear, uh, the trend line name. You could have automatic. You could custom it so that you've got a best fit line or maximum slope, minimum slope. We'll come to the lines of best fit for maximum, minimum data um, further on in this video. And you will want to display the equation on the chart because the equation will give you your gradient. 
shapes in the form of y equals mx plus c. Uh, and then our gradient will give us some information about the physical constant that we're interested in finding. You can also play around with these buttons here, so change the line colour, the style, make it nice and bold, uh, make it look pretty, but uh, don't mess around too much, just make it nice, clear and simple. So we've done that, we've now got our trend line with the equation on there, uh, apologies for the small graph but in order to see everything going on in our spreadsheet uh, I've made it small, you yourself might want to make it bigger. So my, gra my uh, gradient there is 4.0358, you can see that there. Um, I've got this data but I've worked really hard to get repeat readings to find um, uncertainties and so I need to show that somehow in my graph. Uh, to do that, again, it's within the Layout tab at the top with Chart Options, and I'm going to select Error Bars. So just the drop-down option on Error Bars, and again, we get more uh, choices of how we're going to have our Error Bars if we click More Error Bars option. So, once I've done that, this choice comes up. I've got Vertical Error Bars, T Defaults, um, and I want to choose the values for those error bars. For some of my readings, the uncertainties are small. For some of them, they're fairly large, and I want to show that. So I'm going to do custom values for my error bars, and I'm going to specify the value. Once I click on that, um, a box comes up, and again, it's just a case of selecting the data that um, have the values of my error bars in. So in this case, it's my uncertainty. Uh, and we spoke in the last video about how you could calculate these percentage uncertainties when you've got values such as t squared where you've worked with your data which already has uncertainties inherent with it. So highlight the data and we'll get that both positive, so above the data point and negative below the data point will be the same values, plus or minus this uncertainty. Once I fill those in, simply press OK and they should appear on my graph. What's happened here is that my vertical error bars are fine, they're on my T squared ones. I've defaulted to some fairly large X or horizontal error bars. So my next job is to get those into sensible values. In order to do that, I need to go all the way to the left and select which value it is I want to change next. So I'll press down uh, and I want to do series pendulum data, so that's my information, and I want to have a look this time at the X error bars. Once I've selected that, I go back to the top charts, I go click back on error bars again. Once I click, uh, we should see that these are now horizontal. Um, and again, same thing, I just specify my values with custom options. Once I've done that, I've now got horizontal vertical error bars for all of my data points. The next thing that I'm going to want to do is then take my error bars and use them to constrain uh, lines of maximum and minimum slope. So the lines are best fit, which basically go from somewhere to the bottom right of the lower data points to the top left of the top. So something which looks a little bit like this. And then also somewhere which is from somewhere near the top of my data points to somewhere near the bottom of the data points at the top. Top. So again, something that looks a little bit like this. It's important to note that when you're doing lines of maximum and minimum slope, best fit, they will cross somewhere in the middle, so don't be alarmed by that. That is how it should correctly look. With these relatively small error bars, I've obviously um, overemphasized um, the possible gradients that my data could have. So let's have a look about how we could go about finding in a kind of logical manner the um, sensible values for the slopes of these lines. What's important to note here is that these lines here, let me take those out just very quickly. With my error bars, what you'll notice is that actually the biggest errors here are in my length measurement, so it's the horizontal error bars. So in order to get sensible bars of error, what I'm going to need to do is create two points. Um, and this is really a judgment call on your behalf, but I'm going to want to find somewhere which is about the right-hand side there and plot it to the left-hand side up there and then similarly from the left hand side down the bottom to somewhere near the right hand side at the top. So I'm going to want to create those points in Excel and then draw the lines of best fit, just joining those two specific points. Obviously a line of best fit fits exactly between two points when there are only two sets of data within a data set. 
So to generate these points, I need to go back to my data. I created for myself um, two sort of little sub tables. One for my data points for minimum slope with x and y values for the point at the bottom, number one, and the point at the top, number two. And then for maximum slope, again, with x and y values for the point at the bottom and the point at the top. As it's my horizontal arrow bars, which are the ones that are dominant, it's my x values are going to be the ones that kind of change. So if I'm thinking about my lowest data points and so my smallest length, um, and my, therefore my smallest time period, I'm going to plot my time period um, as is, so from the value, that's my y data point, and then the left-hand side of my bottom data point uh, is going to be the value for the length minus the uncertainty. So I'll just type that in as an equation in there. I've then added in values for um, the corresponding t squared value. And then for my top data point, I'm looking at uh, the maximum length plus my uncertainty. So that's what's fitted in there. And again, the corresponding t squared. For my maximum slope, if you think about it, I'm looking to the point at the right, my bottom data point. So that's this number here plus my uncertainty. Uh, and then to the left of my top data point. So that's this number, which is that minus my uncertainty. And then it's the corresponding t squared values, which I've not messed around with because it is my horizontal error bars that I'm interested in looking at. Once I've looked at my graph and I've generated the points that I'm happy uh, to plot between, I then need to go back to the graph and add some more data. So I need to go on uh, right click on the graph, press select data. When I've done that, I need to add another data set um, and I want to call this maximum or minimum slope added minimum slope here uh, and what I'm going to do for my x values I'm going to highlight the x values on the table that I've created for the y values I'm going to highlight the values for the table that I've created there press OK and you'll go back to the graph you'll see that have been plotted so in brown there are the two data points uh, I do a similar thing for my maximum slope. So again, highlight those, and again, you can see in green triangles, those two data points being plotted. So my maximum gradient line of best slope is the line that connects the two green triangles. My minimum gradient line of best fit is the line that plots between the two brown squares. To plot this line, I need to highlight one of my data sets. So let's think about the minimum slope. I right click on the um, brown square or one of the brown squares. Uh, this menu option comes up and I just press add trend line. I add trend line, uh, it's going to be linear, I'm going to want to have an equation so I can get the gradient of the line of minimum slope uh, and I might want to differentiate it from the main line so I'll miss, mess around a bit with the line colour and the style, maybe make it dotted, maybe make it grey rather than black, maybe make it thinner, something that tells me that it's not the main line that I'm interested in, that's the one that I plotted from all of the data earlier on. So there we go, if you can see in light blue dotted lines I've got my maximum slope data. Um, sorry, minimum slope data. Um, the equation has jumped up here, um, so I'm going to need to do something about that because it's looking kind of befuddled and muddled up. Um, so I just simply pick it with my mouse and drag it to position. So there we go, I've got minimum slope data. I've um, just clicked on the box and written min before the y so it keeps track of which graph it is. Um, and it's given me a gradient of 3.9 as opposed to 4.0. You'll notice also that it's come up in my uh, legend or my um, key there. Next step is to do the same with the green triangle, so the maximum uh, slope, and again move my uh, equation around. So here I've got a gradient, maximum gradient of 4.2, or 4.26, uh, and I plotted it again with the light blue line. So far so good. What I really want to get rid of though is these uh, triangles and squares which I've used to plot those lines to best fit. They look kind of clunky as they are. So in order to do that what I would do is I would just highlight either the brown squares or the green triangles, right click and go to format data series. Format data series I can then have a look at the marker options. I want them to be effectively invisible so I go from my marker, from having a marker which is automatic to just having none. Press close and what is that those data points then disappear. So all I'm left with is nice big graph, title, axes are labelled, sensible values, all of my grid lines, decent looking legend, labelled lines of best fit, and it's pretty clear that the dark black line is my best line of best fit, uh, and the other ones are my ones that encompass my error bars, labelled minimum, maximum. Uh, I then just have to be able to pull out 
the equations from that graph. I wouldn't worry too much that it doesn't project down to zero. It encompasses the range of my data, and that's what's important. So, there we have it. Two videos, one to show how we've made this beautiful table, which we can then print out and put in our um, report, and how we make a nice beautiful graph with error bars.